Hi guys, Matthew for TechShark here. Today, we're going to be looking at an LTO5 tape drive I bought on eBay and kind of setting up LTFS on it and incorporating it into my backup strategy for all my media on YouTube and other family photos and videos. We're going to go over how I got it to work on my computer and what it kind of takes to get some of these used old enterprise gear up and working and how you could also utilize this in your own software and hardware setups. This is an LTO5 tape drive that I just bought on eBay a couple days ago. Now, it was listed as in not working condition, and I can see why. It was, it's very dusty when you look in through the flap, and the fan on the back is dusty. And when I opened the uh, ITDT IBM tape diagnostics tool, it does tell me it needs to be cleaned. But I don't know if that's really going to fix the problem. I do have an LTO, LTO tape cleaner, right? I bought this HP. It was, you know, unopened, but it just had a crack in the case. That's fine. And I do have an LTO5 tape, but before I go putting the cleaning tape in, I want to see if I can at least clean just the whole external. I'm not going to open up the tape drive, but I want to open up the external casing and clean it. So we're going to turn this off. We're going to open it up and we're gonna see if we can get this drive running in a better fashion. Alrighty, so we're gonna get into opening up the tape drive right here. Let me just unplug it and pull it over to the bench. This probably isn't what you're used to seeing from a normal tech shop video. This is my desk upstairs in my room. Um, but you know, while I open it, I think it's fair to go over why I bought an LTO drive. And, Honestly, one of the biggest reasons I bought an LTO drive was because I wanted a way to back up my videos that wasn't on traditional hard drives. There you go, comes out. Why is this being so stubborn? Oh, geez, that is dust. There you go. So I think if I just light, like, you can see where it connects to power. So I think if I just, you know, just give it a, really run it through its gears, I don't want to mess up the head. If I do want to get these dust bunnies out, um, it's just like caked in dust everywhere all over this drive including the heads I'm holding as far away possible as I can just so air blows kind of through it but not so much that it's turning the tape heads that's it that's the simplified internals of this tape drive it's got a connector that just connects to the SAS external SAS ports Power supplies right here connects to the fan and then connects back through the same port into the tape drive. Now, if I wanted to, I could take this out and put this in a system. It's 5.25 base standard, just really long, but I'm not going to do that. Jeez, that was not a good sound. I think that Dell logo is now backwards. Oh, well. I'm gonna plug this back in and uh, let's see if we can get it going. Alright. It's just running through some self tests right now. And then it flashes. And then C. Alright, now we're gonna open up ID, IDDT. Alright, we're gonna scan for tape drive. Alright, it sees it on our screen. Zero. Okay. Now this is my first time putting a tape drive in because I want to clean up the dust first. The fan in the back sounds way better. All right, here's our cleaning tape. Oh, 
And there the cleaning goes. And we're just gonna let it sit there while it runs through the clean test. Alrighty. Now, as you can see, the C the C is gone. Please, please insert tape into drive. All right, now we're gonna take out our regular Sony cartridge. Got on eBay. Just got one, just to see if this tape drive would work. All right. Let's insert that. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, we don't care what day is on here. I've never heard anything to it. It's gonna load data onto it, right, and then unload, and I guess just see the overall health of the the tape. I'm just make some wacky sounds right now. Alright, I'm gonna let it run through these cases and then we'll check back in on this later. Alrighty, we are back a couple of hours later. And I seem to have gone the LTS, uh, the drive to show up as LTFS. And this was a big reason I went LTO5, because you can just directly mount it in Windows and not have to use backup software. Which means in the future, if I change over to a different system, I won't have to worry about backup file compatibility which has been a problem in LTO4 and older generations before they came out with LTFS. So what we're going to do now and actually I just want to mention to do this I did have to update the firmware of the drive provided through Dell's website which had worried me before because people were saying they couldn't get LTFS to work on this style of external drives but it seems like, L it seems like Dell changed their tune. So I was able to use the LTFS configurator, as you can see, it's right here, mounted it to drive layer Z, and here it is in my devices and drive section of my Windows computer. So we're just gonna wait for this to start up. Go through this whole startup process to make sure none of the heads are broken at all. Honestly, it's not that bad. Alrighty, I'm gonna take note first before anything, we're just gonna make a text document and write down what is the numbers on this, the barcode that's provided. This is usually for tape drives, but be sure to write down as it does ask for it when you format the drive, as you see right here. So we're gonna put it in the drive. going to go through its process of reading it, looking for metadata, because it is configured for LTFS.
Okay, as you can see here, it's not accessible right now because it's, it hasn't been formatted. So we're gonna go here, hit format. I'm gonna type in the tape zero number. We're just gonna give it a volume name. And it's gonna go through its formatting process, setting it up for LTFS. being mounted by the computer. Alrighty, and you can see this medium is now ready for use. It has popped up as a it's a 1.3 terabyte, 1.29 terabyte free data source. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take my, just to test it, we're gonna take my video one, we're gonna drag it onto here. First, let me just make a copy of it. I'm just gonna put it in right here. Alrighty, so now that we've done a write test to the tape drive, confirmed that it recorded all the data just fine and dandy, we're going to do a retest to see what it's like to pull data off the tape. Alrighty, we're going to put the tape in. Alright, now we can see that data on Z is located in our Windows Explorer. We have TechShox Video 1 footage off here. We're just going to do a test pull, pull it off and see how it performs when writing, when reading data off the tape. Already, that took about three and a half to four minutes. Um, 30 gigabytes of data, not bad at all. It really was good at keeping that 140, 140 megabytes a second spec. So now, if we go to our test pull folder, this is where we pulled the data off of. We're just gonna check to see if everything's still accessible. We'll pull up one of the, the videos. As you can see, it loads just fine no noticeable effects from being on tape. We even go to the main project folder. We can open up the same video. Make sure you open the final cut. And uh, yeah, there's no there's no difference between these two videos. Nothing to say that the tape drive wrote it wrong. It's reading it just fine. You pull up from this this is from the master folder. Alright, now if we go to test pull, pull up again YouTube thumbnail, same thing. Um, this might not be the perfect test to verify the data. Um, back works, bad backup software can actually do that for you, verify all the data, make sure everything was written properly. But um, nothing to say that anything was written, written wrong or read wrong through this tape drive, so I would consider this a success. Alrighty, so I think we can say that this uh, 
little tape exercise has been a success. I think actually blowing out the dust really did help getting this tape drive up and working. Hopefully I can integrate this into my workflow. Um, it's kind of weird that I have a this before a NAS, but honestly what I was thinking of doing with it besides just backing up my video files was some old family memories and uh, VHS tapes and stuff. So if we're going from tape to tape, um, it's better than just to secure that backup along with the master copies. And um, yeah, so I think it's been a success. Thank you for following me on this adventure, cleaning up this LTO drive and getting it back to working order. So, how did you enjoy this week's Tech Shock video? Would you use LTO tape drives in your own solutions for backups for your servers and other hardware? And let me know down below what you would think would be a best suited practice for how I should handle my backups. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and always leave some feedback down below. I love reading through all your comments. This is Matthew from TechShock, and I hope you have a great day.